Hi guys, Courtney Sywick here, a uh, physical therapist with Renew Physical Therapy. Um, today I have a presentation about infant torticollis. Uh, before I start, I just wanted to kind of introduce myself. Um, so I said, Courtney Sywick's my name, uh, born and raised in Florida, currently living in Michigan, um, East Tower specifically. I did my education in Florida where I met my husband who lives or lived in Michigan, is from Michigan. So usually that's the question of like how I ended up in Michigan is because my husband, um, but I love it. And I'm hopeful that I will share some news here or some um, information about torticollis. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and get started. So the definition of torticollis, um, the most basic definition is just defined as a unilateral shortening of the sternocleidomastoid. So in the most simplest sense, it's when this muscle right here, your SCM, becomes shortened. Um, this little kiddo in this picture kind of shows that. Um, and it, again, this muscle. Um, so this muscle has two jobs. The first job is to rotate their head and the next job is to bend it side to side. So when it gets shortened, it does both those things It rotates and then side bends. And you can see like this is it right here. Um, and it can cause all these issues. Um, and as a physical therapist that primarily pe uh, treats pediatrics, it's one of the most common diagnoses that we typically see. So some of the causes of torticollis, there's kind of been an increase in torticollis since we kind of started the back to sleep campaign. Um, that was kind of in the early 1990s and it was as an initiative to reduce sudden infant death syndrome. Um, now, though we've seen a significant in, uh, decrease in SIDS, we've, as a result, have also seen a significant increase in torticollis. Um, and a lot of times too, I mean, if you think about it, when a, a baby's laying on their back, um, they're more likely to kind of fall to one side just because gravity takes over. And so when that happens, um, if they're staying to one side more often or they're sleeping a lot through the day, they'll get that shortening just because that's the position that they're in a lot. Um, and another thing that's kind of caused this increase in torticollis is just kids spending a lot more time in um, containers. So anything in containers is like their car seat because um, nowadays it's so easy to just kind of take their car seat and then bring them into the grocery store or bring them into the house um, or a rock and play. So that's the one that's almost looks like a little bouncer um, or even strollers. So strollers, you're the baby's kind of strapped in, confined, so they're not able to move and have as much of that free movement as much. And again, if they're getting stuck to that one side, it causes all those muscles to get short. Um, the same thing happens with adults. If we, you know, if you find yourself in a posture a lot, sustaining that posture, you'll feel that pain. But as an adult, we can stretch out those muscles, um, but a baby can't feel that or express that shortness to you. So subsequently, they'll have that short muscle um, causing that torticollis. Um, a little less commonly uh, cause of torticollis is just malpositioning in the utero. Um, this happens a lot with babies on bigger birth weights, makes sense. Uh, bigger babies, smaller space, um, they're just fitting in wherever they can. And then obviously twins. So same thing, sharing that space um, kind of crammed in. Um, sometimes I've had kiddos that come in with like bruises on their heads because they're just tight within the utero. And every baby, every mom's different. Um, but the good news is it's all treated the same. So you may have heard or you may have seen some kids that wear a helmet. Um, that's because of plagiocephaly. So with torticollis, you have that muscle that's tight. Um, and as you can see, if I'm rotated like this, a lot of my pressure is going to be back on this side of the head. Um, so plagiocephaly is defined as a, the, um, a flat spot on the back of the baby's head. Um, so you can see in these pictures here, that top left is what a baby's head should be. If you were to look at it from the very top, it's round, um, measuring from kind of the eye to the very back of the head, they're gonna be even. Um, and then the top right and the bottom two just kind of go to show the severity of the torticollis. Um, and again, so, or the plagiocephaly, so the severity of the plagiocephaly depends on how long a torticollis has been going on, um, how tight the muscle can be because different kids um, express their tightness differently, um, how easy they're able to move in and out of that tightness. Um, 
So again, that neck, that neck muscle gets tight enough so that baby has a hard time moving their head. Um, so if that neck, if this neck muscle is tight, they're not going to want to move um, out of it or stretch it because again, like babies, are, they, they feel that pain. Um, so they're just decreasing that stress and the amount of weight placed on the back of the head. Um, if it's caught early, a lot of times repositioning can be very beneficial to reshape that baby's head. Um, so I have a few pictures and a few slides, but it, basically when, I'm, when I say repositioning, either taking a towel roll or um, rolling up a burp cloth so that we're getting that equal weight distribution, um, making sure that that side that is kind of protruding. So if you look at this spot right here, like that on this picture, that bottom left of the, how the back of the head is kind of protruding more, essentially what we want to do is place more weight on that, um, especially because babies' heads are so soft. So it's a lot more moldable. Um, and then if it's in a severe case, that repositioning hasn't been working, um, they're not really showing any changes, that's when a helmet will come in. Um, and we as physical therapists, we can make those referrals. Um, a lot of times it just requires us to contact your doctor and say, hey, you know, this plagiocephaly isn't changing. Um, and most pediatricians or most physicians don't have a problem with it. And then you go to an orthotist who does all these measurements and these scans um, to get a more high tech and accurate measurement. Um, and I added this last little tidbit just about Chrissy Teigen and John Legend's baby. Um, he's no longer a baby, I think he's a toddler now, but he had a helmet and I love that she posted it and shared about it on social media because I think as a parent, and I'm not a parent, so I can't speak to it, but I think a lot of parents, they feel guilty that they could have done something or um, there's, you know, they, they just feel, feel bad putting their baby in this helmet. Um, but it's very common, and a lot of times they end up having to wear it for three months of their entire life. So that's why I just like to remind parents. Uh, so some of the early signs and symptoms, like I talked about, so a child will show a strong preference for rotating their head to one direction. A lot of times the babies do show preferences, which is normal. But again, if they're showing a preference toward one way, and they're not able to rotate in that other direction, that's usually a sign that something's going on. Um, and so one way that I test this, this next little bullet point kind of says, so it's decreased head rotation to the opposite direction, kind of what I just said. Um, and one way I test it is I have a toy. And if so, if a baby prefers looking to their right, I'll have I'll bring a toy all the way around that lights up specifically and make sure that they can look over their shoulder. Um, so one thing I look for is one landmark is like their nose goes over their shoulder and then in both directions. And if they're a lot of times they'll have difficulty kind of right past the middle and they'll probably only go half of the way to the shoulder. And if your baby or if anyone you know has that, then it's probably time to just um, touch base with the physical therapist. Um, and then another sign or symptom is just the tendency to slump their head. So again, we talked about this muscle that has two jobs of rotating as well as that side bending. Um, so if they show that preference that they're tilting their head in one direction. So that's what I mean by the slump. Um, and a lot of times, uh, again, newborns, it's perfectly common because they don't have the head control. But if, it, if they're like three, four months and they have head control, but they're kind of tilting, um, that's kind of an indication that this muscle and any of those other neck muscles are a little too tight. Um, something else that you may pick up on is that a child is having a hard time breastfeeding on both sides or even feeding on in different arms. Um, so I usually encourage parents to switch arms. Um, you know, when you're feeding, either breastfeeding or feeding with a bottle, because um, it gets the baby. I mean, naturally, when the baby's feeding, they have to turn to wherever that, that bottle or the breast is. Um, and if a child has difficulty either way, again, that kind of tells you that something else is going on. And then the last sign or symptom, just more specific to plagiocephaly, is there's that visible flat spot. So again, I talked about if you look at the very top of a baby's head and you see one area is more flat than the other side, um, again, something else is going on. So some of the ways to avoid color class. So this is where I was talking about repositioning. Um, 
first before positioning tummy time. Um, tummy time is, I recommend it as soon as the baby comes home. Um, tummy time and any capacity is gonna get them off the, the back of their head, which is gonna be great. Um, one of the, it's one of the easiest solutions. And by the time that they're four months, I think it's American Academy of Pediatrics, they recommend having at least um, an hour of tummy time. Now I tell parents that an hour of tummy time doesn't mean that they're going for an hour straight. That can mean three 20 minute sessions, six 10 minute sessions, whatever the baby can tolerate, as long as they're getting off of their head onto their stomach for at least an hour a day. Um, and usually I say, if you start, you know, start with three to five minutes and then over the next few weeks or months, we kind of build up that tolerance. Um, and it's perfectly normal for a kiddo to not like tummy time because they're working hard. They're still getting their muscles. They're working against gravity and gravity is super tough as a lot of us know. Um, and so if they're crying through it, uh, don't get discouraged, continue working through it. Um, and, but tummy time is super important for much more than just torticollis. Um, but again, so another way to avoid torticollis is positioning. So you'll see this little kiddo in, in their car seat, kind of what I was talking about with like the burp cloths. Um, I don't recommend doing it while baby's sleeping, um, just for safety. But when they're in their car seat or like if you are home and they're napping and whatever, um, putting that burp cloth. So again, if a kid has, so this is my right side. So they're leaning toward this. The purpose of putting a burp cloth or a washcloth is so that they get the middle. Um, a lot of times what I will see is there's all of these other compensations that happen in their body. Um, so that's why like this specific picture shows it where the burp cloth here and one on her head or hip. Um, again, the main focus is just making sure that they're in the middle. So sometimes it may just be their head. Um, when they're a little bit older, it may be you need some on their, their their stomach or their their hip, um, but again, it's just making sure that they're getting that even amount of stress on the back of their head and decreasing if there is a flat spot, decreasing the amount of weight. Um, another thing you can do is switching directions in the bassinet or a crib. So a lot of times, babies will want to look out of their crib. Um, so depending on you know if if you lay them on the right side and they're looking to the right. Flipping them each way is going to help them so that they're naturally turning in each direction. Um, some other ways to avoid torticollis is even just working on simple range of motion. So um, when they're in tummy time, placing things all around them, I, I like to do almost like at their 90 degree angles so that when they're in their tummy time, they're looking in each way. Um, or even when they're on their play mats with the stuff above them, putting stuff on all directions so that they're having to move their head. Um, it just make sure it's to make sure that they're continuing to have that good range of motion and mobility. Um, and I really do like uh, the art of distraction of light up toys and singing toys. Um, I, they just really grab a baby's attention. Um, and one of my favorites are the baby Einsteins, mostly because they have really long songs. So, this last one is for um, this. So this part, I would definitely recommend seeing a physical therapist before you try these. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys some of the things that if and when you do go to a physical therapist, this is something that they're going to recommend. And it's just stretches. Um, so same way, like if, if an adult was to have neck pain, you show them these stretches. Um, but more specifically, so if it's this muscle on the right, you're stretching in the opposite direction. And then you're actually rotating to the same direction. Again, it's a tricky little muscle that has those two, those two jobs. Um, but it, this, these pictures just kind of have a good illustration of what it would look like. Um, a lot of times, babies don't necessarily like these stretches, um, so I and they end up like squirming. Um, so a lot of times, I'll tell a parent, wait till they can tolerate it because it seems counterproductive when they're squirming out of these stretches, or do them. Um, at a diaper change or after a bath when they're nice and warm. Um, but again, before you try these at home, I usually like to recommend seeing a, a physical therapist just to make sure that you're doing them correctly because um, last thing you wanna do is irritate a baby. Um, but 
that is all that I have. Um, those are my references. And then this shows all of our clinics throughout Renew. Um, the Frankenmuth and Midland one, as well as me up in Tawas, all treat infant torticollis. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys a map and get an idea of who will treat it. Um, so any questions? Thanks, Courtney. That was really great. Um, we did have a question from someone wondering if there are any long-term effects of torticollis. Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so there are some long-term effects of torticollis. Um, one of the more common long-term effects that I find, so if, say you have this tight muscle, I mean, you can see where my head's positioned. And naturally, as I grow older, and I say I haven't gotten my torticollis treated, I'm gonna want my middle, my, my world to be positioned. So either my eyes adjust um, or my whole body will make that compensation. So you can see like, if, if I want my head to be midline, because that's naturally where we wanna be, my whole body is shifting. So a lot of times we'll see these compensations in our trunk. So it may almost show as like a, um, as a scoliosis. Um, another thing that I see, so if a, a kid truly has, again, this right muscle um, is tight, everything to, they can see everything on their left side, but they kind of forget about stuff on their right side. So a lot of times they'll have like a neglect um, or a really strong preference to use the left, which again, isn't bad, but we want to make sure that kids are doing things equally. Um, but one of the other long-term effects of plagiocephaly that is associated with toracolis, so Again, a lot of times we'll have that flat spot and you'll see a whole shift in their head um, because babies' heads are so soft that the whole front end will shift, their eyes will shift, their ears will shift. Um, and one of the only true complications that I've found in research is like mostly TMJ issues. Um, and then like problems with like vision of like depth perception um, and everything like that. So very long-winded answer, but I hope I answered it. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Um, just a question that I had is like, what would be kind of the, I don't want to call it a red flag, but what would tell somebody that they should see a physical therapist that their baby's torticollis is um, advanced enough that they would need help? Yeah, yeah. So I think honestly, the red flag, the biggest red flag that I tell that I would educate someone is if your baby really isn't rotating past or anywhere near that middle. Um, so again, that muscle gets so tight that they can't rotate in that full um, range of motion. So a full range of motion is shoulder, my nose, shoulder, nose. Um, so I'd say if they're lacking any set of that range of motion or they're showing that really strong tilt. Um, and I think at that point, those, those are things that we need to work on. And the sooner we work on them, the easier it is. Um, and then usually the sooner we catch them, the um, quicker and shorter sessions we have with therapy. All right, excellent. And just thanks for everybody for joining us. We will be sending out a follow-up email that has some links on how you can get a hold of Courtney or the people in our Midland and Bridgeport clinics that can help with infant torticollis too. But otherwise, thanks so much for sharing with us. Yeah, thank you everyone. Hope you guys learned something. Thank you.